Welcome to AM Reviews. I am Skybear Aguilar and I'm here with my buddy Sal. Sal, what's up? Not much, just hanging out. Nice. And today we are going to talk about Atomic Blonde, correct, Sal? Yes, and by the way, this shit has tons of spoilers, so if you don't want to hear our spoilers, don't click on it before you watch the movie. Just you fair warning. All right, and let's get right into it. Atomic Blonde is about an undercover MI6 agent who is sent to Berlin during the Cold War to investigate the murder of a fellow agent and recover a missing list of double agents. And Sal, what did, what what rating did you give this movie? I gave it an honest, straight, strong 8 out of 10. I enjoyed Same it. Same here. The movie was enjoyable. Um, I loved it because it was action-packed. Uh, at the beginning, I loved how they introduced the location with the spray paint. That was kind of a really nice. I didn't expect it. And also, the soundtrack. Amazing. Oh my god, this soundtrack was fucking awesome. That that really was a really nice touch upon it. It really made me feel like I was back in the 80s. You know, and it's... like you got David Bowie, you got The Clash in there. I mean, like all these fucking hit songs were playing and I was like, "Oh, and, okay. I'm down." It's not the original songs. It's basically like uh cover bands but with like let's say a David Bowie song but in Russian. And it fits so well with it, like being in Berlin and the Cold War and everything and the spies. I just felt like it basically added more to the movie than just the movie itself. I mean, it really, like, brought it together. Right. And, oh my god, this movie was so fucking awesome because this action was fucking amazing, Sal. (laughs) No, it was. And I didn't realize that one of the directors of John Wick directed this movie. So, I mean, it makes complete sense why this movie is so action-packed. No, it does. I mean, all the gunfights, the action scenes and everything, it was basically like, I was just like, I was in my seat, but there was no time that I just yawned or anything. It was just action after action, and then it was just intense. And, oh my god, and... Some it had some slick ass cinematography in it too. I appreciate it. It was pretty crispy. Oh no, that 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 by itself too. And at the same time, the choreography, it was amazing. Um, we we linked her uh, her routine when she was practicing, and in some of the scenes, I loved it how she, it was her. But then you could actually see the cut scenes when they edited it together. And it was like stunt double. Then they edited. It, then it's her. But overall, it was just. A complete story with with the action pack, with the choreography and, and the the recording and the soundtrack brought it together. It it was just amazing for me. But with that said, there is some issues we have with the movie. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, for, I I see that you have some more issues than I did. Uh, for me, uh, my only issue was it with it was that it was just a tad bit slow at times. Uh, during the movie, but. Overall, for me, like, I thought, you know, like, if they just picked up the pace just a tad bit more, then it would have been perfect. But with me, I mean, I didn't see it as a con. I saw it as, like, you're running a marathon, and then you had to catch, you know, your breath. So that's when the slow scenes came in, and you had to, uh, you know, all the information you were receiving, you just had to analyze it and, and think about it for a split second, and that's when they gave you those slow times to think about what you just had seen. So for me, it wasn't a con. It was basically, like, a nice time to stop and think about what you just saw or heard Mm. but uh i can see how it for some people who think faster than me it's kind of a slow paced movie but um my other issues was there was one scene um and where it's basically when she's escaping after um spyglass gets shot and they're they get into the cop car and they're running away uh i think it's a uh a jeep is following them. She turns around, shoots it, it flips over. They keep going. She says, buckle up. He's going to buckle up. Another car starts following them in front. She puts it in reverse. And as she's going backwards, she looks backwards. The camera pans behind. I didn't see where the jeep turned over. And that just happened a oh. few seconds right before. <laughs> and I'm like, mm, yeah, that's a pretty fast cleanup in Berlin. But that scene kind of like <laughs> put me off. And I was like, okay, um... Well, it's Berlin, Sal. They're they're efficient, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but during the Cold War, come on, really? No, but yeah, I mean, just that scene. Um, you know, it caught me 
wagging my finger at them like, oh, shame. You kind of, you should have paid more attention to that. But I mean, and then some scenes, like for me, I don't know if it was for everybody. I just, it was hard to keep track of when they were in East and West Berlin. Because to me, it seemed fairly similar, except that, you know, one had more cops and military presence than the other. But at the same time, they didn't focus on that. It was basically like they were just going from one scene to another. And sometimes they did say, you know, East, and then they said, we're in the West. But sometimes it was hard to keep track if I wasn't paying full attention. So Yeah, I, I could see that. I think there was like a, well, like one or two times where I was a little bit confused, like where exactly Charlize Theron's character was. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that's that's about it for me. <laughs> yeah, and then but to be honest, like you really didn't you don't need to know where she was. You just needed to know that she was kicking ass. Right, exactly. <laughs> so as long as she kicked ass, I, I was good with that. Uh, the other thing, it was like, uh, I wanted to keep track of all the code names and the agent's name and everything being thrown around. And in my mental note, like my little chart in my head with the little yarn going across each other's and, you know, going back and forth in the map. I kind of make a mental note about it, but it was kind of hard to keep track of all the code names. You know, at a certain point, like even I kind of forgot who, like which code name went to who. <laughs> yeah, because they're like, this is his name. He goes by this code name. Okay, now moving on. It didn't give you enough time to process it. But um, other than that, you really didn't know, need to know anybody except one name, Satchel. Right. That's who you're looking for. And to me, uh, I was totally convinced that Satchel was the boss of mm -hmm. the MI6 for a long time and I'm like she's looking at him and I'm like oh motherfucker he's right there it's him isn't he and she's like she's looking over and over by that point I was like convinced and then when at the end of the movie when everything turned around then you know it's supposed to be her that she's satchel and then it's like no it's the other guy then at the end it's like guess what she's nobody she's basically an American spy and I was like fuck dude that that threw me off because like at the very end when I thought that she was like a double agent and then fuck no Sal she was a goddamn triple agent motherfucker <laughs> and then cocksucker <laughs> that shit was oh dude I was like when I saw that I was like I was like oh you you fucking fooled me like motherfucker I was like shit but to that I had to give it up and I, I was like that was really nicely done I enjoyed it but yeah, it's one of those movies that you need to keep track and you need to revisit your original thesis, your, you know, like who you think the bad guy is or who it is. And it keeps changing once you get new information. And you got to understand these people are double agents. They're trained in keeping secrets and twisting the truth and stuff like that. So in an essence, don't feel bad that you got tricked. Just basically be like, oh, shit, that's them doing their job. Exactly. That's yeah. double agents. Yeah. So the movie did a great job at keeping me guessing. So that's all I have to say. And how would you feel about about a sequel to this movie? Because that was actually one of my first thoughts when I left the theater. I was like, you know what? I could go for a part two. <laughs> I I can go for a part two. And then the thing is, it, it was originally a graphic novel. Yeah. Which I totally didn't know that until the movie. And I was like, I'm going to look for this novel. I mean, graphic novel, and I'm going to read it. And I can see it actually now being a there's going to be a part two. I'm not saying that there is going to be a part two officially, but I'm saying I hope there is. That, that we're it makes absolutely enough money, down yes. for part two. Fuck it. I'm down yes. for a, a trilogy, Sal. Whatever. Yes. Because this was awesome. <laughs> yes. No, and then um, the actors were incredible. Their acting skills, and um, it was just amazing. Oh, oh yeah. And what is it? Also, uh, just, just something off the top of my head. Yeah. Uh, I was not expecting the actor who played Hugo Stieglitz to be in this movie, but I was pleasantly surprised that Hugo Stieglitz was in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, there was some, there were some um, actors that you didn't expect to be in there, and they were there, and it just added to the basically the fun of the movie that you saw them in there and playing the roles, you know, efficiently. I would say, um, but yeah, everything was nicely done, but it just focused on the main characters and how she was trying to uncover the secret but at the same time you thought that was the only thing she was doing but she was covering her ass so that's mm -hmm. a little <laughs> plot twist so again spoilers if people didn't hear the beginning that's a big spoiler <laughs> so in case you aren't aware there is a company called mondo they make fucking fantastic movie posters 
for movies that come out recently and also previous films. If you can get your hands on a Mondo poster, fucking do it because they're great. Uh, they have released the soundtrack for Atomic Blonde on vinyl in partnership with Backlot Records. And, like, seriously, the soundtrack is fucking great. Just fucking get it. It's awesome. And the link for the Mondo uh, soundtrack is going to be in the description. So go check it out and remember, get yours before they're gone. And now we're going to take some time to do a little tribute to some recently deceased. Uh, Martin Landau uh, passed away on the 15th of July, sadly, uh, due to a heart attack. And in case you don't know who Martin Landau is, he is most famously known for being in the uh, Mission Possible TV show. He was also in North by Northwest. And he was in Ed Wood, which he won an Oscar for, for playing Bela Lugosi. Um, for, for me, I fucking love this guy. Uh, like, he's been one of my favorite actors and Sal like if you haven't seen Ed Wood I would go like check it out because he gives a fucking phenomenal performance in Ed Wood dude I mean if it, he didn't win an Oscar just for nothing so right and like in that movie like there's a like every time no matter how many times I see it there's a certain point where I just completely forget that it's not Bella Lugosi in that movie because he's just He's just doing that good of a job in that film and that yep. you just get lost in it. Once you see a movie with that caliber and you hear about somebody passing away, you just it basically makes you feel like oh, if only we had an extra year with that guy or something, you know, just or at least be able to say, you know, what he meant to us. Um, it's we're going to miss him. I mean, Mission Impossible TV show, North by Northwest, you know, incredible movie, all time classic. And Ed Wood, I mean, what else can you say about this guy? Yeah, yeah. And we're also going to talk about George Romero, who uh, died actually the day after Martin Landau. And he sadly died of lung cancer. And we all know who George Romero is. I mean, you know, father of the modern zombie genre. Yeah. Uh, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, so on with the dead movies. Oh, no, because of him, we have comedy movies like Shaun of the Dead, you know, Simon Pegg, he always talks about this guy, you know, how he inspired him. Um, and then if we wouldn't, if it wasn't for him, I don't think we would have The Walking Dead. We wouldn't have, you know, all these other zombie movies that we are, you know, so fond of having, especially the recent movie that we just watched, The Girl with All the Gifts. I mean, I'm pretty Absolutely. sure in some point they got inspired by this guy, because if not, we wouldn't have had zombies. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, what isn't there to say about George Romero? I mean, we we wouldn't have a whole subgenre without this guy. <laughs> and uh, started making movies uh, at fourteen with a eight millimeter camera, <laughs> and uh, the film that actually wanted him to make movies in the first place was The Red Shoes, which I did not know about, and I really appreciate that because The Red Shoes is one of the most beautiful movies of all time. And, I mean, so many people love it. Like, Martin Scorsese absolutely adores this movie. I adore this movie. And so many others. And also, jumping back to North by Northwest, uh, at 19, he actually worked as a page boy on that movie. And apparently he was unimpressed with Albert Hitchcock's directing style, saying that it was mechanical and passionless. <laughs> which, if you... I mean, everybody can be, you know, it's true. I mean, to a certain degree, he was simplistic, what everybody thought. But, I mean, everybody has a different opinion, and we respect that. His career, how it began and how he started and what he, where he ended up is just amazing. Um, like I said, I mean, dude, like, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have a zombie franchise. It's it's just very, like, saddening. I mean, to a certain degree, we yeah, just... It's a damn shame. It's a damn shame if we can... You could just have him as a zombie. We would take him, you know, come back to life and be the, uh, you know, living dead. It's, <laughs> I mean, we just time him up, you know, just time him up like in Shaun of the Dead at the end, you know, keep him in the in the shed and just go visit him once in a while, you know. Well, with that said, I mean, here's a minute for each, a minute of tribute. It's not a minute of silence, but we're going to honor you with a minute long of your work. So here it is. Hope you enjoy. Be there. Hiver. 
Beware of the big green dragon that sits on your doorstep. Wait! Pull the string! Pull the string! I have no home. Haunted. Despised. Living like an animal. The jungle is my home. But I shall show the world that I can be its master. I shall perfect my own race of people. A race of atomic supermen that will conquer the world. I heard they offered you to direct, direct some episodes. Yes, an episode, but yeah. that's once the Bible is written. Right. And in fact, I thought it was a little too close for comfort. And uh, so I I've, I've basically said no, even though a bunch of my buddies are working on it. Right. Greg Nicotero and the boys from Sundance. So I have photos of Quentin and Robert and I doing zombie walks in the Monroeville Mall. And Robert Rodriguez says, oh, my God, we just went to the Monroeville Mall. We saw where you shot Dawn of the Dead. And he's like, grow up. What's the matter with you guys? <laughs> Seriously, grow up. Come on. And it's, it's a sad time for all of us, but uh, he's given us so much. Hey, you're still afraid. Stop it now. I mean it. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it. You're acting like a child. Look, they're coming for you. Look, there comes one of them now. Get back. Jesus, just tell me what's going on. I told you to get back. That was the minute of tribute. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And for the next new movie that we're going to talk about is going to be Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. If you want to find out more, the link for that is going to be in the description. And all of our social media is going to be on the screen. Remember to click and subscribe. And if you have any questions, send us an email. And remember, keep watching movies.